Ahoy Open Suze, my name is Lubosz Kotsman and I would like to welcome you all to our kickoff session to celebrate Leap 15.3 development phase star, which is today. Um, this is supposed to be a very friendly session, just, just to, to share some details with you, some news, what's challenging, uh, you know, what's ahead of us all, what we have to go through, and, you know, chit chat with coffee. Um, I feel like this is something that everybody needs today, especially now when the, the physical contact is very limited. So let's have a look at what's going on. We have basically four topics that I would like to cover. One is the uh, roadmap. So what can you expect and when? Then the new development model that we will have in OpenSys Elite 15.3, uh, which is based on the currently developed prototype that we have been working on for the past six months. Um, then the challenges that, that are kind of, kind of new to the release, but we have also one outstanding challenge that we would like to address. And then of course our favorite talk, coffee and talk discussion. Um, so let's start with the roadmap, I guess. Um, as of today, we are entering the development phase. Uh, so Leap is officially now alpha. Uh, we have a jam-based OBS setup available, currently based on SP2 update binaries. Uh, however, uh, later this month, we will sync uh, 15 SP3 binaries to OBS. So then it can be you know 15.3 with everything as expected. Uh, next milestone would be beta that will be uh, in February. By the way, this is all orientational. Uh, so the full roadmap is on the link below. You can you can see all the milestones and then particular deadlines. But uh, again, about beta, you can expect that it will already have the fully identical core because most of the features which are currently in progress, uh, you know, regarding unification of behavior of SLI and LEAP will be finished by public beta of SLI, which corresponds with our beta milestone. Uh, so this is important milestone for all of us. After that, you can expect RC in early June. RC is basically saying, hey, um, don't change the product anymore. Uh, you know, it should be only bug fixes uh, and important or uh, any other pre-agreed uh, features that will come late, but basically all the features uh, or, you know, new features to the release should be done by beta. That's that's general agreement. So maintenance should, setup should be also ready, which is important. This is where we felt with the prototype. We were not finished by uh, November. So now we have time until June, which should be more than enough. Um, next milestone is Godmaster. This is also in June, but uh, the very last week. And also it's all driven by the quality of, of Leap. So no hard dates, but uh, so far I believe it's the 30th of June. It should be The build should be always on Wednesday. Um, so it should be Wednesday, I suppose. And then in Beginning of July, we should go for global availability. So this is when the Elite 15.3 images will be officially available for download. Also, uh, we would like to make sure that the retrospective uh, for you know what went well, what didn't go too well, is open at the same time. So people can you know if you if you hit any issues with the GA, you should be able to report issues immediately. And this is what we want to achieve. So all the fresh issues and experience with Leap as you install it uh, can be shared right away and month we would like to go through review of, of these responses and basically take actions um, you know just like with previous release um, give feedback to engineering team leads and then community members to make sure that you know we can get better and, and make sure that people know what's appreciated and what's not uh, so this is about the roadmap uh, we can talk about it later in the discussion if something's unclear basically one thing about the roadmap it's it's closer to sleep than ever because if we are, you know, if we have a development model which is based on sleep binaries, we also have to respect their deadlines for for submissions. So the 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 my proposal for 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 roadmap is already based tightly on on the current sleep schedule. Of course, schedules can change, so any any change will be communicated. It's not exact, but it's it's in it's designed in a way that that you know we can coexist, we can work together, and and uh, the deadlines are still met. So let's talk a little bit about the new development model, which is which is the most exciting topic, I guess, this release, and also maybe uh, maybe surprising to some of you um, because uh, you were expecting the intermediate release, which didn't happen. So uh, how is it going to work? Uh, you you guys already know that uh, the open source of Lee 15.3 will be based on sleek core uh, or binaries for the sleek core, which is roughly 4,000 packages, and uh, what does it mean? How can you actually change these packages? And, and what about the rest of the packages? So the model is that uh, community packages are handled in open source backports that you may know as package hub. And uh, 
this this is going to be the case for 15.3. So basically, uh, all submissions will be always sent uh, for open to the lead 15.3 project. Um, to make it simple for developers, you always submit against one project, and then there is intelligent redirection, which either forwards forwards the submission to SLE if it's a package with SLE origin, you know, particular update project, and so on, uh, or you know, it's redirected to backwards. Or in case that we fork the package in the top level project, it will be there. It will be for packages that we you know are maybe in SLE, but we have to rebuild them for whatever reason, uh, you know, to unlock development. So. This is going to be rather simple. Um, you know, you submit always against the same project. What happens if you submit it against Lee? That, 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 that may be um, that may be kind of an uh, interesting question. It's, it's all documented on the wiki page below. You just need to look for um, for a submit request mirroring. So basically, uh, when you submit something against Lee, which is in fact Lee package, let's say Bash to simplify it, for example, then uh, one of the OpenSUSE release team members who, who is in the group uh, Suze the reviewers will either approve or reject the submission. You know, it, ha it has to have some form. You need to reference a uh, particular bug or maybe features that, that community members can now, uh, you know, Jira feature that community members can now open. Uh, and uh, it needs to be, you know, it needs to be something which makes sense for the release, right? So uh, the Suze the review team, which is basically open to the uh, team, open to the release team, does the initial filtering. Um, we make sure that you know we, we return you back the submission if it doesn't meet the criteria. If it does, we for, we approve it, and then the uh, plugin mirrors it internally into into IBS. So actually, it's the release manager can you know work with the submission, and then it, it's just like any other employee would do it. And you have to meet the same requirements. You know that's the issue references, some certain code quality, and so on. Factory first rule. And uh, this is it. Uh, the, the idea is that any any changes or, or comments on the submission internally are actually reported back to you through your original submission. This is kind of nice work, which is still pending by AutoBuild, but it's close to finished. We can already you know test the mirroring. It's just some pieces are uh, not yet fully finished. If you go to submit request, there is a reference for how does this work. And then, of course, the, the big change uh, in the in the development process is the fact that we will now have a shared effort on handling open source backward submissions, which will be, you know, for all let's say 8,000 plus community packages. Uh, there we have uh, some sort of pre-agreement with with package hub team or open source backwards team. If you would like to to uh, keep the effort of or focus of the current backwards team on the publishing part or sleep package up there is a uh, you know a lot of going on such as package conflicts or file conflicts in between packages and so on so they should focus on this part while the open source release team would would naturally handle uh, or cover you know does it build is this building on all architectures such sort of problems and, and also quality of the od code so uh that's about the development model uh I guess that you will have a lot of questions if you do, you know, just 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 wait for the coffee talk and, and we can discuss it all. Let's have a for next topic, which is the challenges that we have. It's alignment with Lee, of course, uh, since this is actually supposed to be net, not like, you know, based on the same sources, just rebuild and so, so you still have a little bit of separation and, and you know, it's the gap is a little bit bigger, let's say, but uh, we actually now have to build it on top of SLE, uh, SLE binary. So, so all changes need to be checked in in the source code when SLE builds it and so on. And this is raising some sort of new issues, right? I believe that um, I've already mentioned that the roadmap is, is more aligned to SLE before, the, especially with deadlines uh, for, for beta, for RC. And uh, then the next part is that we really have to take uh, take into account also the fact that um, the development model of SLE is based also on on the fact that a lot of packages are coming from various maintenance streams um, to, to kind of uh, eliminate the amount of code streams which are currently being supported. So this is a new challenge. Uh, in some cases you think that it's uh, it's beta, beta, you know, submit for beta, uh, SLE 15 SP3 beta, but in fact it's, uh, it's maybe a maintenance request for SLE 15 SP1 uh, updates. So this is this is a challenge. We have to make sure that everything is understood. The documentation is easy, easy and understandable. The next issue that I see is obviously open to the backwards, right? Um, it's an effort which is uh, ongoing. Uh, guys are doing great job, but right now we actually it's going to be you know it, the primary focus was on Intel, and. Uh, 
some packages for ARM or PowerPC were not rebuilt because it required extra effort and so on. And this is this is now this is now going to go through you know uh, a lot of traffic. So we need to make sure that the, the, the current established processes scale and so on improve what can be improved. We have the entire alpha phase to do so. So I um, I, I feel that we can help the project a lot also, you know, so so the customers get uh, binaries for pretty much all architectures um, and, you know, and we improve the overall quality of backports and processes. The next uh, concern which is uh, taken from previous releases is, uh, and then this is concern from quality assurance, that we have too many open bugs. It doesn't say that the quality of the code is bad or anything. It's just saying that there is a, a lot of open bugs lying on, and some of them may be resolved. Some of them uh, may be easy to resolve, just uh, they are not getting enough attention. And we want to fix that. So there was a, pro a previous proposal to have a weekly bug smashing events where, you know, uh, there would be a public event, let's say on Jitsi. We would share a screen, go through um, issues for a particle component, you know, we would have to have agenda and, and just do not switch in between random bugs. Let's say focus on, on, on base system one week, the other week, let's focus on GNOME and, and so on. Go per component per component, uh, set some criteria for uh, triage, maybe use label for bugs that, that already received an update and slowly go through it, uh, take maybe a half an hour each week just to, just to go through bugs and uh, on certain topic or we could cover more topics a week it depends on you know initially it's going to be more work and then once we actually get it into shape it's going to be a low time low time effort and this is this is exactly where we want to get um, so i'm kind of excited about this and it's also uh, it's going to be tough so and the uh, next topic is sleep features and submit requests by community it's now it's hot topic and uh, there are still some you know we have a pilot for a feature request so we already reported a bunch of issues it seems to work um, you know just like uh, it works for any other uh, SUSE, SUSE partner so this is good it's an established process and uh, we just need to figure out how it's going to work for, for the entire community and you know we need to scale properly and I'm, I'm pretty sure we may hit some constraints and, and we will have to you know get them resolved and the next part is uh, we, we want to avoid any sort of bottlenecks in the process so so if, if community member needs to report a feature there shouldn't be just one person where he goes to like uh, he should be, he should know how to request access he, or he should know who has currently access and this needs to be all documented and communicated so the, so the process actually helps it's just not yet another you know layer to to fix the issue we really want to make sure that this is this is the framework which uh Susa engineering understands and if you report something there it's going to be taken seriously and you know we'll go through the proper processes just like any other feature request if, if uh, Susa employee would open it this is what we want to achieve Maybe better to to say any other SUSE partner, just like uh, IBM and you know SAP. We want to have the same same importance level, same processes, same workflows. So uh, yeah, these are all challenges that I see, and they're all a bit tough, but we have to go through them, you know. And if we if we do it right, I feel like everybody will be happy in the end. Um, so let's see. I believe that we still have one topic. Ah, that's that's coffee and talk. So. Switching off from pre-recorded video and let's talk.